Who's a developer today? Yes. Show of hands, good number. So this is targeted to developers because uh, we will have a good example. Of So, have you heard of uh, Arijava beside uh, earlier? Anyone? Yes? <laughs> so, actually, this presentation I will try to uh, help you get to grips with the uh, change in paradigm, actually, that uh, this functional reactive programming uh, represents. Okay. And if you have any questions, you want me to repeat those what you just asked. So to start, I will, I will show what we what we do, what we know well, how to do, and what would be good to, to have. Okay. So when you learn developing or programming, you you learn to do operations that are synchronous. You get a return value from a method, from a function. Then you use this value by another one, and so on. You chain you change transformation. Okay. So this is, in any language, you have uh, programming that looks like this, right? And with the final, final usage. If you have used asynchronous calls, very likely you have used callbacks or listeners. So these are, uh, in Java at least, are interfaces where the method when you implement them, you will be called back on them when the value is uh, returned. Okay, so the, the writing usually is a bit uh, more complex, more verbose. So you, ha you ask to get something, and when the value is returned, you want to be called back on this method. Okay. When the value is returned, you want to do something again with the value and you will be returned and you value and so on. So you start to see that uh, there is an indentation uh, issue. But asynchronous calls are necessary when you want to uh, improve the user experience. When you make network calls, database calls, you, you don't want the UI thread to wait for the result. So this is necessary and this is uh, fast implement. I mean, the, the execution is fast, and when you know how to, in, to implement, it's also easy. The difficulty is when you have a lot of them. Uh, so if you know futures, I'm not very familiar with them, but there is another way to uh, ask for an asynchronous value. You just uh, prepare it in the future, and then you, when it is finally called, you do the action and then you ask for it. Okay, so this is uh, difficult to read, but this is another way of doing uh, asynchronous calls. So now we are going to try to see what is the idea behind this uh, functional reactive program. So what would be nice to have is that we just describe the sequence of actions. When this action is done and I have received the result, then I need the other one. Just like when it was synchronous. So what we would like to have is that instead of saying fetch key on my callback, we say fetch key and then do something. So this notation uh, is the uh, lambda notation, but you could imagine that it's just this describes a method and what the method does with the object. And then we continue saying, when we have the result from here, we use it to do another operation. Right? And we can continue uh, sometimes. And finally, use, okay. So, let's come back a little bit fast. So this is the base of Rx Java, okay? You ask for something, then you will describe what are the different actions you want to have done on, uh, on what you receive. So, 
I will show some code examples because I made a very small project on GitHub to uh, demonstrate. But before I show you the code, it's better that I explain the classes. There are many classes. There are 4,000 uh, methods in this uh, library, so it's, it's a heavy one. <laughs> it uh, takes you closer to the 65k a little. So the the observable is a generic and it is like a pipe. And when I wrote before fetch key, the result of this was an observable. Okay? So it's like a pipe where objects will travel, where the objects travel through it. Okay? It can pass no object, one, many, an infinite number. Okay? And this pipe also packs the errors. Okay, so the error is not thrown at the point of where it happens, but it is packed also through uh, the observable. And these observables are, have a finished signal. When the, the last object has been sent, and we know this is the, I mean, when the observable knows this is the last, then there is the complete signal. So three, three types of events. And <clears throat> so this is observable. You see it coming, there will be observer. This is uh, the, the receiver at the other end of the observable. Okay. So observer. When we had earlier in the sequence of events, there was then, 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 and then there was the last then. That's the observable. Okay. And because the observable is piping the objects, the errors, and the complete signal, this is what the observer implements. Three methods. Okay. And since it is uh, an instance of a class, you can subscribe it to many observables of the same type. So, is it okay so far? Yeah. So the observer, when it listens to uh, an observable, this is called a subscription, and you can keep a handle to the subscription. Okay. So it's not just uh, like you set a listener and then you have to set the listener to now, later on. Here you keep the subscription, it's untyped, but it allows you to, in the future, unsubscribe so that the two separate. Okay, and you no longer receive the element. So this is, you can think of it like when you do a set callback to now, or set listener to now, to avoid memory leaks, to avoid the crashes and stuff like this. The similar thing here would be doing unsubscribe on the uh, subscription. Okay, so there's a lot of words that repeat observable, observer, subscription, subscribe. It's always the same words, but you have to get used to it. So <clears throat> another uh, interface defined in RxJava. It's an action, one because it takes one element and it has a certain type, so it just does something with an object. Okay? So these objects travel into the pipe and an action will be able to do something with the object. That's the idea. Okay? It's, your, it's on you to define what it will do. And one of the reasons why there are so many methods is because they define many interfaces. So it takes two elements, takes nine elements of the same type, or different types. Similarly, it's like an action, takes an element, but returns another element. Okay? So this one is a transform. When you had earlier transform A to B, this was A type, this is B type. Okay? So you transform an object into another one. And similarly, you can have a function with more than one object. So we have the objects. Now it's time to talk about the operations that are available. So are, have you, any one of you looked at the streams or optional in Java 8? So it's a bit the same notation that you don't have. So when I was showing earlier, Dot, dot then transform. Actually, this is dot map. 
Okay. So I have a little bit that transports eight types, and I do something, and then it will be B types. That's what dot map is doing. Okay. And it holds up the pipe. So it's synchronous. So you can do a conversion from A to B. So these, I listed off uh, the, um, the, there are very good uh, explanations online, so you can always check. This is a typical um, diagram that you have to learn to understand. So the line like this represents an observable, right? This is the time and the different objects as they are produced. So these are objects. And this is the completed signal. Okay. And this is another observable. But this observable at the bottom is the result. When I have the dot map here, what comes here is the observable at the top. And the result of this is the other observable at the bottom. And map, let's say, chops the edges to make a square. This is a transformation. So each element has been transformed and the order is kept. Okay. That's map. Map from one object to another, keeping the order. So similarly to map, but without changing the observable, without changing the elements, we can decide to do something. So here we see action because we don't transform, we just use. So, can, for instance, if you want to save in the cache, you don't want to hold the elements. So that's another diagram. So here we see at the bottom there is no observable. It just does some stuff on the object. Is it okay so far? Mm -hmm. So flat map. So this one is a little bit more complex. Um, for map, we transform from A to B. Now, for flat map, we transform from A to an observable of B. Okay? So, here it was an observable of A, and we transform to an observable of B. If 